th this panel of figures shows the observations from Hippo, which is shown in this panel, and three models, a European model over here, a Japanese model over here, and an American model over there. And what you see, have plotted here, is latitude. This is the southern hemisphere over there. This is the northern hemisphere over here. This is altitude. So it's a slice right down the middle of the atmosphere, which is basically the main product of the HIPPO mission. Uh, these lines that are drawn on the figure represent so-called potential temperature. You could think of them as density. The air, air parcels can move along these lines without adding or subtracting any heat. So you tend to see uh, concentrations of pollutants become uniform in uniform bands along inside these contours. And that's exactly what you see here in the observations. Uh, you notice that there's more methane in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere. And there's a sort of a gradient there, and you notice that these things are laying up along the lines of constant potential temperature until you get to the tropics and then they don't respect potential temperature at all. We'll get back to that in a minute. If I go down here to the GIOS Chem model, uh, Harvard model actually using uh, NASA assimilated winds, they do a pretty good job on uh, representing where the sources are and how they get distributed through the northern hemisphere. They actually don't do a particularly good job on the gradient between the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. They're quite a bit off on that. Um, if we look at the Japanese model, it's actually doing pretty well in all those measures. So if there was a derby, I guess the Japanese model wins it. So this image shows the cross-section of methane concentrations in the atmosphere that we observed during the first two flights of the second HIPPO deployment, starting in Broomfield, going through central Canada. So you can see where we are going here through central Canada, coming to Anchorage, and then we fly up almost to the North Pole and come back again. And the little red splotches on here are sort of a color code that shows you where we hit very high concentrations of methane. And you can see there are two such locations. This one over here is in the fossil fuel extraction and uh, region in Canada where they're mining coal and, and gas and such. And this one over here is from uh, something else. And we'll talk about this one in a minute. So uh, you can notice that uh, during the winter time, the emissions that come from the surface are held close to the surface. And that's because the air near the surface is very cold and dense, and it just kind of sits there and traps the emissions. So it makes an, uh, a nice sort of way for us to record w what is happening in terms of the emissions accumulating in the atmosphere to, s to see the buildup near the source regions. Uh, so this stuff here is no big surprise. When we look at the other pollutants that we measure on HIPPO, we see that they're associated with industrial extraction activities this one over here is a little different. Um, we see a lot of methane in the lower atmosphere, but we don't see any other uh, types of pollutants. And so this uh, appears to be associated with methane being released from the subsurface in the Arctic Ocean. We can't really prove that, but it certainly has been a source of concern that as the climate warms up and the surface ocean in the Arctic warms up, we may see release of trapped methane that sits down in the shallow sediments. Um, it's kind of hard to tell when you see methane in the atmosphere, whether it's coming from that process or maybe it's coming from um, release from the um, oil fields and gas fields of Prudhoe Bay, which is right down here. But in fact, uh, it sort of looks like um, this material here is very much coming from uh, non-extraction type of activity, and so we think it could be due to uh, this much talked about release of methane that's trapped in the Arctic as the climate warms up. 